Hello, welcome back to Garden Obsessed. My name is Carla. I've got my trusty sidekick here, Lola. We're just chilling in the AC here today. It is like 30 degrees Celsius out. Um, I haven't checked what it is with the Humidex, but it is humid. So we are enjoying the air conditioning today. And since I don't wanna be outside, I thought this would be a good and long overdue day to um, talk about our June totals from the garden. Um, I started I started this in May this year. That's really when we had like our first harvests and it's part of me keeping track of all of the harvests that come in from the garden this year. I'm also trying to track, it's impossible for me to know how much time I spend in our home garden, but because we have to physically drive to the community garden, I'm also able to kind of keep track of how many hours we're spending there. Just for my own curiosity, I kind of want to know um, you know what our what our you know return on investments kind of are not that it would ever stop me I could be losing money and I would still garden um, I get a lot of other benefits out of gardening but for my own curiosity and to share with all of you this is something that you know I've looked for videos from other people and they're very few and far between so I thought it might be something cool to do this year and if I don't end up forgetting a lot, like we do a lot of snacking out of the garden, so obviously we're gonna miss some things, but if, if it's something that I'm able to keep up with and you know not get overwhelmed and forget to do, then it might be something that I do every year that would help me compare year to year how our gardening year was. Um, and it will also help me track I'm gonna talk about it but like you know last year we had a spectacular strawberry year and this year not so much so um, it, it'll be interesting to see what years were good for certain things and be able to track things long term so hopefully you find that interesting as well um, so let's start so what are the things that we harvested in June well right off the bat um, we definitely had a crappy strawberry year. So um, I have refused to even pick, pick any strawberries. Um, we have had some sunshine now and things have dried out a little, but things are still saturated. Like um, we had a little bit of rain yesterday and it's like it never stopped raining. Like it's just, there's so much moisture and so much humidity the berries are rotting like there's a you pick that we were trying to go to because our our berries were so poor this year and even them I think they've had two days where they were open for you pick and the rest like they're not even letting people in so it's not just us um, but what I did is I was able to purchase eight quarts of berries um, they were on sale they were a decent price berries are running a little expensive this year not surprisingly because of the poor season locally that we're having here. Um, I'm hoping some later varieties, we might be able to get a few more. I just kind of got like the bare essentials, what we needed for strawberries. Um, there is a local raspberry farm that will be opening probably the end of July, beginning of August that we went to last year that we really liked and we'll be picking raspberries, like we'll be going to, to the U-Pick so we might have fewer strawberries and more raspberries this year it's just one of those gardening things right so what did we actually manage to harvest in june um we finished up the last of the kale florets there were a few little handfuls of asparagus um i started harvesting some herbs it was mostly chives and basil we harvested greens, which was mostly lettuce and spinach. Um, there was a tiny little taste of hascap berries. Um, one of our bushes had a handful of berries. Um, it was just enough to make a hascap batch of kombucha. So that's what ended up happening to those. Um, our cherry tomatoes started trickling in. And the big one is the garlic scapes. 
and the garlic scapes was also kind of disappointing. So June is a little underwhelming compared to what it would be in previous years, but things are still okay. We still have lots of scapes. What went on with the scapes? Um, it's a terrible leek moth year. So last year was the very first year. I think I've been growing garlic for five or six years now. And last year was the very first year I saw a leek moth or signs of leek moth. Um, this year, I think we lost about half of our scapes. So that's crazy. Luckily, you know, we had, we started with 200. So we still ended up with like somewhere around a hundred garlic scapes, which is plenty for our uses. The main things we do with those is I make garlic scape butter and I make garlic scape pesto. We sometimes throw them into stir fries and things like that as well. So that's plenty that will fill our, fill our garlic needs and get us to the garlic harvest season, which is what I'm way more concerned about with the leek moth, but that's, that's a topic for a different day. So um, in total, a lot of these things were dribs and drabs. Like I, we didn't have very much asparagus. It was less than hundred grams less than 100 grams of herbs, a um, couple hundred of the greens. We had about 250 grams of the kale, only 25 grams or so of the cherry tomatoes and the house caps. Um, and we had over 500 grams of the garlic scapes. So in total, we had 1,161 grams of produce come into the house from the garden, which is a, just a little over two and a half pounds. So it's a little less than what we had in May, which is not typical. Um, you know, typically we would have had double that in garlic scapes. Um, that's not the total garlic scape. Like I started harvesting in June and finished in July. So garlic scapes, we'll, we'll be talking about those again in July. Um, and we would have had last year, I think we had somewhere around seven pounds of strawberries, something like that, six and a half pounds, seven pounds. Um, so we would have had quite a few more pounds of food if the strawberries had of, um, not rotten, rotted in the field, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so I, I did some pricing similar to last time, like um, for, for the florets, I compared it to the broccoli prices because there's nothing similar. Um, I used the same asparagus prices last time for herbs. Um, conventional, I was able to find about $2 for a 28 gram bundle or um, it was it was um, up to four or five dollars if it was organic. Um, for greens, I used like three fifty seven for a two twenty seven gram package, or it was about five fifty for a smaller package. Um, has caps, I couldn't find a price for has caps. So I used like a general berry price, um, like raspberries, blackberries, things like that. And it's for conventional, it was about um, $3 for a half pint. And that was like the only price I could find. So if, if there was something like that, that I couldn't find an organic price or market price, like a farmer's market price. Um, I think I doubled it for my total calculation. So instead of $3 for half pint organic, I assumed would be around $6. Um, cherry tomatoes, they were about $6 a pint. And same, I doubled that for, for organic. Um, and garlic scapes, I found varying prices just in market Facebook groups um, that I'm a part of and they're not you know necessarily in my area but I found a couple of prices and used kind of like a high one and a low one they they were pretty similar but um, one of the prices I found was you know for bundles of four or five they charged a dollar or another one I found was they charged 250 for a dozen so I used both of those prices in my conventional tally and my organic tally so the grand total for the conventional um, was $22.43. So 
So even though we had less weight of food, some of the products are kind of specialty and a little more expensive and we actually saved more money this, this month than we did last month. Um, just to go back, last month the total was $8.47 conventional. Um, the organic last month was $19.25 and this month it was $34.84. So that's awesome, um, and I'm totally happy happy with that price, even though you know we're missing some scapes and we're missing some berries. Now, the other thing that happened in June this year, I kind of teased last year that um, it might be a big number this month. And the reason I said that is because my cousin built a greenhouse like about a year ago. It's just like a greenhouse that's attached to his garage for his own personal use. And in February, he kind of like came up with the idea. He's like, you know, you and I are going to be starting a bunch of plant starts anyway. Do you want to have a plant sale? And I was like, uh, of course, like go big or go home. So we ended up having a plant sale. We weren't really sure how much interest we were going to get. We weren't really sure what to grow. It was really kind of a learning year. Um, I think I ended up spending about $150 um, investment that was mostly in seeds and pots. We had some hanging baskets and we had some pots that we made little salsa gardens in and stuff. Um, and I think he spent about the same. That was mostly on pro mix and he had some pots um, that we used to plant dahlias in. I used a lot of my um, extra dahlia um, tubers to plant and sell as plant starts also. So we had some vegetables, um, mostly tomatoes and peppers, a few other random things, a few herbs, a few like, you know, like cucamelons and things like that. Um, we also sold um, some hanging baskets and a few little pots, odds and ends things. And we ended up earning over the course, what we did was we just advertised on on Facebook Marketplace and we had mostly community members from within our community, which was awesome. And everyone said we should do it again next year, so I think we will. Um, and what we did was we opened for four hours on a Saturday morning and four hours on a Sunday morning. Um, and we did that I think we did that one weekend and then two weeks later we we did it for just a Saturday and then whatever we had left we just advertised um, on marketplace sold a few more things that way so we ended up with a $300 investment we ended up bringing in $1,131 so that's a profit of you know $800 400 for me 400 for Craig um, I, what we didn't actually split it that way. What we're gonna do is invest that in next year. Um, we did only a dozen hanging baskets this year and they all sold. Um, we did just wave petunias in them. They were really pretty. We just had one color, but I think we're gonna do, you know, three or four colors maybe next year and do a few more hanging baskets. So we need to um, buy some supplies like that. We also decided uh, we definitely needed some high quality trays to make our watering and fertilizing jobs easier. Uh, we kind of used up our stash of, you know, if you're a gardener, you have like a random assortment of pots and things that, you know, are in garbage bags in your shed, stuffed everywhere. So we used up a lot of those stocks that we had. So we're going to need, um, you know, small plant start pots and things like that next year. So we decided to just invest this um, in next year. And if there's any money left over, we'll divide it after we've done all of the spending that we need to do. So that is super exciting. So um, that's quite a bit more than $34.84 for doing something we were going to do anyway, essentially. We just, you know, did more of it, right? So that was exciting. Um, already there's different things coming in for July than the past couple months. The 
The kale is done. I don't have any um, succession planted, but that's gonna be a video really soon. It's time to start thinking about some of the things that we'll need, I will need to start um, for successions in a couple weeks. There's a lot of space gonna be freed up with the garlic harvest, things like that. So pretty soon I'll have a video, you know, what I'm starting in July for later in the summer and early fall and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's some different things coming in and overall considering, you know, how our spring and summer has been so far. I'm pretty happy with the garden. Um, community gardens looking good. I think I only had um, one crop not come up. Um, I had planted some turnips and I think they just drowned. Honestly, they just rotted. Like it was, it's still, it's still mucky there. Like that's how much standing water. And last year, excess moisture wasn't an issue and I had built kind of my beds up and this year I was like I'm just gonna go flat I don't think flooding is gonna be an issue and then you know we had like biblical amounts of rain so um, wasn't maybe the year to plant flat but everything is okay and you know we had that issue with the tomatoes that there was some tomato curl and I had thought that it was due to ex excess moisture and the plants are look like they're coming out of it so that's good um i do have some potato bug issues um the lady beside me is actually an entomologist and she was looking for some potato bugs for her classroom so i was like help yourself and so i haven't treated for them yet um that was a couple days ago so i probably will run out there in the next couple days and just put some diatomaceous, diatomaceous earth um, on a few things, I had some flea beetle um, damage happening a little bit on some of the brassicas that I had, but other than that, um, things were looking really good. So that's where we're at. That's the June summary in a few weeks. Um, look forward to, you know, the July summary. I hope it won't be the middle of July before I actually, or the middle of August before I actually get that video out. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So I hope you're having an awesome day. I hope your gardens are flourishing and growing well. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.